السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه الله in the name of Allah may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his companions and all those who follow him until their judgment I would like to take بإذنلاه تعالى this time which I am um, driving to to the Pearland Islamic Center to uh, join بإذنلاه تعالى to join uh, Sheikh uh, Yusuf Rios and uh, Sheikh Abu Sumaya in in this series of the Converts Chronicles. Now, I wanted to introduce my my contribution, Bismillah Taala, first uh, in three in three parts, right? Three parts. So, part number one is which will be now, inshallah, which is my first contact with Islam. Bidnilah ta'ala, part number two, my first contact with the Qur'an and the journey through the Qur'an. And part number three, my first visit to the house of Allah, to the mosque. So, my first contact with Islam, and as many of you might know, was through through the MBA, through sports, right? Through sports. Let's put it that way. Sports and hip hop. Right, so that was my first contact with Islam. So breaking it down, in sports, in 1993 there was a tragedy, and this tragedy was there was a tragedy in the NBA when um, Michael Jordan decided to retire, and when Michael Jordan retired, actually the Bulls were my favorite team. When Michael Jordan retired. I was stuck. I was stuck searching for another, another uh, favorite player. So Alhamdulillah, I I like. I didn't like to choose players because of uh, because of their fame, but I like to choose players because of their of their game and players that I could maybe imitate, right, and learn from. So in the midst of searching, I used to collect basketball cards. And I had more than 3,000 basketball cards. And I used to, I used to organize them by, by, by teams and by players. So we'll organize a team and all of the cards of that player will be in one page or two. So I had a lot of cards of of this player by the name of Chris Jackson who in 1991 decided to accept Islam when when he played for the Denver Nuggets then in 1993 the same year that the same year that uh, Michael Jordan decided to retire for the first time before returning he played me out but it's all good <laughs> he played me out so once I once I uh, switch to my I, I didn't like to switch, you know go back and forth you know once we make a decision we gotta we gotta stick to it so I once I picked Chris Jackson and in 1993 Chris Jackson decided to change his name to Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. Don't worry, uh, the the traffic in 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 Pearland is pretty smooth, so I'm 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 driving carefully. I'm not I'm not looking at the screen, so please excuse if I don't comment. Uh, so Alhamdulillah. So Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, Chris Jackson changed his name, and then 
when I used to collect the basketball cards in the back, it would say information about the player. So one of the basketball cards was the the NBA, uh, I believe, Fleers, right? And that type of card had information on the back, and one of them said, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, formerly uh, known for as Chris Jackson, accepted Islam, went to pilgrimage, changed his name, and the definition of his name is this. So I began to learn about Islam, even though I wasn't interested in Islam. You know, to be to be straightforward, I wasn't I wasn't interested in Islam. I was just interested in the player and learning about the player and trying to imitate the player. So that, you know, in those years, uh, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf had a situation as a new Muslim himself where he decided to, instead of standing up for for the for the national anthem he decided to make dua right so they penalized him because of that they suspended him and penalized him but i started you know learning about his manners and and the reason and that you know made made me look into islam now in the only problem that existed was that I wasn't able to watch a lot of the Denver Nuggets game because we didn't have a lot of channels. In those years, we only had TNT. If you lived in New York, you had, you, you you watched the Knicks and MSG, right? And if you live in New Jersey, you watched the New York the New Jersey Nets. So we we had more access to the Knicks and the Nets. And then in, in TNT, we will watch the, the, great, the big teams, right? And Denver Nuggets wasn't all that, right? It wasn't, it wasn't a big contending team. But still, you know, uh, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf still managed to, when Jordan returned, he managed to score 50 on him, which Jordan in those years was the top defender, the, the, the leading uh, defenders in the NBA in those years and also John Stockton was was top of the list also in being one of those that used to steal a lot of um, from the other players so Mahmoud Abdul Rauf also scored 50 on him as well so just giving you a little background on who Mahmoud Abdul Rauf was and he still got game mashallah you know he still got game I managed to meet him alhamdulillah so when I couldn't watch the games of the Denver Nuggets, I decided to choose. I decided to choose another team, so I chose the New York Knicks. Now, the reason for choosing the New York Knicks, and this, you know, not many of you know, is because there was a player by the name of John Starks. You guys know him. Houstonians know him for sure. Because uh, Hakeem Olajuwon blocked them and, and the Houston Rockets won the championship. But anyways, so John Starks, when I looked into his story, happened to have a similar upbringing. So John Starks used to bag grocery stores in the supermarket for tips as a young teenager and I used to bag I used to bag grocery stores in I used to bag grocery stores in the supermarket and alhamdulillah at the age of 15 and, and on I always used to have my Jordans but I used to work for them and I used to earn the money and I used to buy my own Jordans and appreciate them as well. So alhamdulillah, when, when I found out that John Starks had a similar trajectory, right, a similar experience, 
it attracted me. Also, his game was pretty nice. You know, that year he became the sixth man player of the year. And in that year, 19, 1994, the New York Knicks played with for the championship versus the Houston Rockets. That year, alhamdulillah, my, my brother was cheering for the Houston Rockets. And he, I had the jersey of Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, and I still have it. I wanted to wear it, but I'm going to the masjid for salah. And the, and the Musallis are not going to understand why I'm rocking that, why I'm, rock, why I'm wearing a, a NBA jersey, right? They don't know that that was my jersey when I was 15 years old. So alhamdulillah, the New York Knicks went to the finals versus the Houston Rockets. Hakeem Olajuwon had a lot of manners, but one thing in common was that he's Muslim, and Mahmoud Abdurrahman was Muslim, so I kind of knew a little bit, maybe observed him a little bit. And there was some mention of him fasting during, during the games, and something that caught my attention, me knowing the New York Knicks, the New York Knicks were trash talkers. The New York Knicks used to trash talk and used to instigate. And Hakeem Olajuwon was patient, but he destroyed them with his game. Now, that was my, you know, my contact with, you know, my contact with Islam. My contact with Islam was with the NBA, and I mentioned also through hip hop. So I used to hear, I used to hear Killer Army. And there was a, there was a song that Killer Army, Killer Army is a group from the Wu-Tang Clan, right? Killer Army is a group from the Wu-Tang Clan. And Killer Army had a song and then don't get me, there's no beats here, okay? So don't, don't expect any beats to come up. I have no DJ system. I'm driving, I'm going to the Masjid for Salah. But honestly, the lyrics don't contradict our belief, right? <laughs> so the, the song was, there are two songs. One was, Allah sees everything, everything. Allah sees everything, everything. Allah sees everything, everything. Allah sees everything. And then the song continues. So I began hearing that, and, I'm, and I have my radio walking down the street, and I'm hearing, I'm, I'm listening to Allah sees everything, everything. And it's developing this, this consciousness, this God consciousness in me. That's number one. The other song, we're here, we're almost at the Parallel Islamic Center. The other song was... The other song was... The key to living life. The key... I'll say, I'll say it slower, right, inshallah? Let me get out, inshallah, and, and, and we get to see... We get to get out of this vehicle and inshallah have appeared in the Islamic center. Bismillah. So we're here alhamdulillah at the Pearland Islamic Center here by the we're here by the Interfaith Garden, right? We're here by the Interfaith Garden. So let, let us proceed inshallah. So the other song was the key the key to living life. The key to living life is refinement. With knowledge itself, without a lot, you ain't never going to find it. So, just a and then the last, the last uh, song that also touched me was when Tupac was talking to his, to his friend who became Muslim. And he said, you're a Muslim now, no more dope game. Hit the pen, the penitentiary, hit the pen, and now no sinning is the game plan. So those songs honestly embedded something in me which, which made me think of the reality of the life that I was living with my buddies, with my friends, seeing that 
there wasn't a lot there wasn't a lot going i mean there was it was just it, it was just an environment filled with with drugs an environment filled with clubbing an environment filled with 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 with, with that with that type of lifestyle so so therefore that is you know just an introduction of my first contact with islam so bi'idnillah bi'idnillah ta'ala bi'idnillah ta'ala we would uh the next session inshallah we will talk about my first contact with the quran and a little bit about the experience of going uh you know of 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 seeing the first quran or let's say let's go back uh the first time that i ever wrote some verses of the quran in my notebook before i even got the quran so i pray that allah accept this effort you know i want, wanted to share a little bit of the trajectory because it's always good to reflect upon the past in order to appreciate where one has arrived in addition to not put a limit to the steps that one has taken and i pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all these steps and that he continues to preserve us in the in the right path in the straight path and also that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us and continues to bless us with knowledge right so that we can number one proclaim the message of islam sincerely have an internal conviction right of this message of islam and have the ability to put it into practice because like they say talk is cheap so i pray that allah bless us with the ability to live islam so that we could benefit our families and benefit others as well barakallahu feekum subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alaykum dr arif assalamu alaykum shami assalamu alaykum diego assalamu alaykum anju assalamu alaykum sheikh yusuf assalamu alaykum julio delfino assalamu alaykum brother jamal assalamu alaykum carlos may allah bless you barakallahu feekum inshallah assalamu alaykum